Hi everyone, I'm immigration lawyer John Kasravi. Thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, we're doing our regular 5 p.m. Pacific time live discussion talking about immigration, the hot topic being the public charge rule, what's going on with that. We're gonna get that in your questions in a moment. I guess I'll just jump and jump into what the hot topic is, which is uh, Republic charge. So there was this rule that President Trump really pushed into place. Uh, the term public charge always existed. This rule hasn't completely been taken away, but it's much more simpler um, than it was the way the President Trump did it. And it required all sorts of more forms, all sorts of more documentation. Uh, that is why uh, President Biden came. Uh, There's a lot of lawsuits on it. And they say, hey, you know what? We're not going to pursue this. So I'm going to go into more detail in a second as more and more people come in because we get asked about that a lot. But just a reminder, please subscribe, press the like, leave a comment. It helps the algorithm. Uh, and uh, just come back. We have a lot of information on our YouTube page, JQK Law Firm. And you'll find a bunch of information there. But with that, let's get it started. Hi, why is USCIS very slow? Well, for the same reason the whole world is slow right now. It's called COVID-19. The pandemic has caused much less people to be able to go to work and it excludes USCIS employees. And so a lot less of people are going there. Funding has gone down dramatically. They blew a lot of money on waste and during the Trump administration. So they don't have money to pay contractors. They don't have money to pay overtime. So taking between uh, the intentional destruction of the immigration system by the previous administration, along with COVID-19, the destruction that it has, that put together creates massive delays in processing times such that are unreliable because I'm sure we're going to see we're getting questions already asking how long my case takes. That answer I just gave right there answers it. I can't tell you how much your case is going to take because first of all, I don't know the details of your case. We have to talk about that in private. But secondly, one case will take three months. Another takes a year. You know, it's very inconsistent. All I can say is be patient. And that's all we can say. Don't make any big moves until your required case is done. Real boy will ask, I have a pending, I'm a 30. My spouse died three days ago in a car accident. What should I do next? I'm, I'm really sorry about your loss. You also say I'm waiting for your travel documents of September. Well, um, unfortunately, if your spouse dies, uh, your case gets uh, automatically tr uh, transferred and becomes an I-360 kind of case. If, if you already have I-130 pending, uh, you know you should consult an immigration in private, uh, but you become a widower case. And so you need to deal with that issue and submit some extra paperwork if needed or update USCIS if needed with the death certificate. Um, just talk with an immigration attorney, they can definitely help you, but you will need the death certificate. But if you had a marriage case pending um, and your spouse passed away, there is the possibility of saving the green card case. Uh, it's doable, it happens pretty frequently. Uh, so you gotta do that. With uh, with regards to travel documents, uh, you know we have to see what's going on case, but you should discuss that with a private attorney. Uh, Eduardo says, can you file a 601A concurrently with the DS-260? So no. Uh, so let me back up so people know what's, what's going on. If you enter the United States without permission or you overstay a tourist visa and you overstay to a point where you will be subject to what's called a three or 10 year bar if you leave the United States, um, you will need to submit a waiver to be able to overcome that uh, when you, before you go to your embassy interview. Uh, I'm saying a lot of stuff that people who are in the process will understand, a lot of people might not understand, it's more complicated. But the essence is um, to get this waiver, first you have to get it approved, uh, then you, I mean, you can file the DS-260, but it doesn't make any sense. So uh, when someone is doing an I-601A waiver for over presidents, first they have to get the initial petition approved. Once that's approved, you can begin a step called consular processing. And for that, you need to submit a form DS-260 and form I-6 for all this kind of stuff. But there's no point in submitting that stuff to get an appointment because you need to get the waiver approved first. So you can submit the DS-260 if you want to, but then you're going to submit a 601A. That's going to be pending a year. And then you're going to go back into your case and all the information you put in the form DS-260 is going to be outdated and you have to do it again potentially or, or you know, deal with, with some stuff like that. So there's no point for you to move the consular processing case forward other than paying the filing fees. Um, but you just want the 601A to be approved, then you could jump on the DS-260. What's the rush? You know, Petal is asking, can someone who comes from India apply for a student visa? Anyone can apply, apply for a student visa. Um, it, it, your location doesn't matter. It matters if you're really a student, if you really get them out of school, and if it gets approved. So there's a lot of different factors. Your location being from India itself doesn't make a difference for the case for the most part. Angel asks, hi, I just had my interview done. My case status shows that the case is in review. What does that mean? It means they're still thinking about your case. Um, it's not abnormal. Sometimes it takes some time after an interview to get a final decision, even if it's a positive one. So you just need to be patient. I haven't been in your interview. I haven't seen your paperwork. You might have had some mess ups that are crazy and really bad that are problematic. I don't know. Um, but if your case was perfect, 
this could still happen. So uh, that means there's no answer for you right now. Probably it's gonna be fine, uh, but it's not abnormal to get that, even if it's a good case. Lincoln asks, USCIS posted 50 minutes ago on the website saying the new guidelines for public charge says it's not required at all. Well, thank you so much, Lincoln. I appreciate you uh, for mentioning that. Uh, I had che I checked the DHS site, which says they're going back to the 97 rule. I hadn't saw it on USCIS. So I guess the, the public charge rule is gone if you're processing in the United States and most likely very, very high likelihood if you're doing consular processing in the form DS-5540 hasn't been used and it won't be used. But again, it could be strict. I've seen even before all this kind of stuff, um, USCI, I'm sorry, the, the, the embassy in Mexico, Ciudad Juarez, sometimes just reads into the statute, and makes up things with a public charge where I've seen colleagues get denials incorrectly. For example, they brought a joint sponsor to, to satisfy the public charge rule for my 64 and they said we can't accept joint sponsors. Like, what, what the hell? That's, it's in the rules you could do that. So it is discretionary. That was probably a mistake that to get people involved to try to fix that. But good news, Lincoln, thank you for sharing that. I hadn't saw the USCI's post on it yet. Thank God, hallelujah, we don't have to do this for I-944. It created many hours of extra work, hundreds of thousands of dollars of extra costs, thousands of dollars of extra costs for clients. Uh, and I don't think it did anything to help, um, you know, the idea that, you know, people are broke, they can't. That form itself didn't help out. We had the affidavit of support where we had a U.S. person sponsoring it and being financially there. That was all that was needed. That was a ridiculous request uh, situation that was added by the previous administration. Jose asks, why is my receipt form say Potomac, but the online service says Nebraska? <clears throat> They, they, none of this makes any sense. So when you get a receipt, it might say, uh, for a filing, it might say where the location case are processing in. Uh, but I found mass inconsistency where they'll say it's processing in Nebraska and then I get approval notice from the California Service Center. It's in Texas and then Nebraska, Nebraska comes. There's no consistency. Um, I have a case right now, I was looking at it last night. It's, it's a I-130, uh, a woman, a US citizen filed for her father. Uh, when I go online to check out the average case time, it says these cases are done in like 10 months. Her case is pending a year and a month. So I'm like, okay, let's file a complaint. So I went to file a complaint. They're like, no, your case is within regular processing times. But I'm like, what do you mean it's within regular processing time? Your own website said it's not. And so we go back and forth. Uh, no, we can't help you. So don't rely on logic and consistency uh, when it comes to this kind of stuff. Uh, there's no real answers because it's just, it's a huge mess. So that, that's all I could say about that, Jose. But thank you for your question. Uh, Afsar says, can you give information about the citizenship test? Yes, President Biden brought the citizenship questions, the civics questions about U.S. history and the like back the way it was before. 100 questions, you get six out of 10 of them right and you're good. Um, just practice those. Now there's other things that go on in citizenship, going into your background, all that kind of stuff. That's a case by case analysis to see if there's any issues that could pop up during citizenship that could cause you to you know, get the citizenship denied, potentially even lose your green card. So there's a lot of stuff going on there. And on that happy note, I want to thank everyone who joined today. We're going to have to call it a day. We hit the 30 minute mark. I'll be back here again next Wednesday, 5 p.m. Pacific time. And we'll jump into it and answer your questions. In the meantime, if you want to schedule a private consultation, just email me at info at jqklaw.com and we'll get down to business and see what's going on in your case and what we could do. Until next one, God bless and be safe. Thanks for joining. I hope you enjoyed this educational video. We have a second channel with much more information as well at JQK Immigration Clips. Please check that out. Also, you'll find our social media site has a lot more videos, images, and information about the U.S. immigration process. Please check those out on the various social media websites.